Okay guys, thanks for stopping back into the crazy channel. Today I'm going to do subframe connectors. Something you may not know about the convertibles. I'm thinking it's just convertibles. I've never seen a, um, anything but a regular top, hard top have this. But, right here. Anyway, you know what a subframe connector is, right? Subframe connector, we're gonna weld it to this here. This is part of the subframe. And then it starts back, you've got about a foot right here. But on the convertibles, check this out. This plate right here, I don't think that's on the, um, the hatches or the notches. That plate is separate. Of course, I've got to be very careful. I'm looking under here, um, but I don't want to hit any gas lines. Make sure I stay away from my fuel lines. But I'm going to weld that subframe connector in under here. Um, mine was a... My set was a cheaper set, but here's what they look like. You got a bar here. Here's your um, seat bolt, the bolts that holds on your seat. You got one there, one there. This bar kicks up, and since it's angled, you can see one side is actually longer than the other. See the back side back there, but when you flip it this way and put it in, you want your um, longer side there and there, and that's what holds it from flexing, basically. We're gonna weld that to that, so that bar runs right straight through there, hooks to the frame, then it kicks around to the back. I'm thinking I'm gonna be, see the front end comes with these pieces here too. These are on the convertibles. I know I have seen a couple other pictures, people did them, but you got one on each corner up near your wheels and it was just to help kind of stiffen the car up a little bit. It's just a little bit of extra stuff they did because they knew the top weak, but I'm probably gonna have to take my side grinder, mark a line and go straight down on my um on the subframe piece you can see here i may have to move my jacks i might have to lower the car and move it back but i'm going to cut this out where my bar goes and then weld this piece back to the subframe connector and and the frame right here where it is when i jacked the car up i made sure all four of the um that the whole car lifted up all at once because you don't want to have your weight your your um your anchor points on this lift somewhere forward or backward and you can't jack up a car and do the front end well to the front and go back up the car because you're actually twisting your frame especially on a convertible so i made sure i was not twisting my frame i made sure that whenever it started picking up the whole car picked up at the exact same time so that's a big pointer you got to have that frame straight whenever you weld these things on so we're going to get into the action i'll probably go ahead and bolt this bad boy right here i'll probably just go ahead and bolt it on i mean that's pretty easy the, the kit came with two nuts so i'll stick that that go ahead and get those bolted on and then um then we'll start looking at what we got to cut right here to get these to get the bars to work on the um back here i'll get this plate out of the way so i can weld to something a little more solid okay more overdub time just because uh, a lot of clinging clanging thinking going on and i'll tell you you know right here i'm just basically putting the nuts and um the washers under there bolting those down and you will probably end up having to take those off if you decide to take your seats up. You might have to undo those nuts or else you're just going to lose them. But here I am test fitting my um, the bar from front subframe to back subframe through the gap. I did have to take out about an eighth of an inch out of the, uh, the little gap there they made in those cross members. And here I am grinding out that back plate. I found out just how much I had to grind to um, get it to get everything out of my way and you can see I stopped it right where the um, where that plate actually kicks up at a different angle so all I had to grind was what you see there and that's where I will be welding the subframe connector to and I make me a little mark right there that's about where it's gonna be if I go any further back I'd have to start doing a whole lot of other crazy stuff so that's how far I went back on it and then just pointing that out and talking about it how I'm gonna have to grind or get all the paint dirt dust grime off of there so I'll have a clean weld be welding to something some good metal next I'm taking this bad boy right here which is a uh, sanding head basically and I'm gonna clean up everywhere that I know that bar is going to touch clean up the sides and the bottom and uh, you know just basically cut it down to metal sand it all down to metal so I have a good uh, something good to weld to back to the overdubbing no need you having to hear all that grinding and whining yeah I'm just grinding everything that I 
got to weld to so I have a nice scuffed up piece of metal to weld to get paint debris junk out of my way and then I used my brother-in-law I was at his lift I used the um, transmission jack that he had to hold that bar in place for me and I've got a hammer there where I had actually tapped everything kind of square that that bar getting it square I just used a hammer once I got a nice little bit of snugness on there so it wouldn't move around when I started welding and uh, right there I'm just pointing out where I had sanded off the uh, frame and now I'm, and then I went back and scuffed and sanded off the paint off of the new subframe connector then I began my tack welding once I got it tack welded I got the transmission mount out of my way I grind down the weld that I did you can see I welded pretty much all the way through there and then I, um, I ground off any of the ugly weld to get it out of my way so these plates right here these are plates I made I cut me down some little rectangles and uh, figured that would help make it even stronger than just welding seams so I weld on those plates use the clamp to hold it up there for me and then there's the after effect of one whole round of welding and yeah I am not a welder as you can see that is pitiful but I didn't take welding in high school that's the one class I didn't take I did a lot of auto mechanics and woodworking those are my two favorite things to do but I got everything welded top bottom sides those plates like I say I did that I welded the seams up and then I came back and there remember when I cut those uh, I was grinding and cut the um, those little plates that come on the, from the factory on this convertible out and then I re-welded that to the bar so made that strong and they didn't reach all the way up to the front one so I didn't have to do anything with those little plates up front but then I also welded on the cross members and then here I am just cleaning everything up and getting it all try and get it a little bit more flush with it to look a little better basically went around to all four points that I welded and I put plates everywhere I could get a plate and then after I got it all ground down pretty that's me spraying getting everything trying to uh, get that from wanting to rust back sprayed every place that I welded just like that you satin black so it won't show up so bad all my every anchor point and then I'll go back into talking right here in a minute after you can see where I did all that so yeah wasn't too bad just it's just labor here's a freebie for you guys who uh, haven't been looking at the channel very long see my Reese hitch it's almost the same height as the uh, back edge of the bumper I got a 90 degree angle that comes in here goes out there and then you can hook whatever you want to out there but you cannot see it all I did was bolt it to my bumper frame just took the short bolts out put longer bumper bolts in I can stand on a rack on it but um so I know it'll hold 160 pound I doubt I ever have that much luggage so I always run the uh, flat rack out behind the car so yeah that's how you do the homemade that's a homemade hitch setup but there it is I cleaned them up and painted them and y'all like I say I know my beads are horrible looking but I'm not worried about it it's my car it's not for sale so there we go. We're gonna put it down through these curves around here and see what it feels like. I will tell you, I can feel a difference in the car. It feels feels like more of a 2000-ish model. I've never rode, I probably have rode the new edge car. But it definitely feels better. A lot more solid, a lot more planted. Starting to rain out there, but good thing I live on some nice curvy roads. But yeah, with the um, strut tower brace and those subframe connectors, I mean the car feels like a way better car. They say this is the number one modification you should do to a car, and I'm gonna say it's probably a very good one, especially if you want to race. Because you think about all that torque being transferred from your engine, it's trying to keep one way. So of course the torque is throwing your drive shaft and everything the other way. And this will just hold it a lot more stiff. But anyway, I'm going to finish up this video right here inside the car. I do want to tell you, yes, it was worth the, the chrome bar looks good. It is very functional. I like it. Works well. I like the subframe connectors. Everything feels solid, planted. So yes. Do it. If you think about doing it, do it. Hopefully I'll see all you around somewhere very soon. 
God bless you all. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Peace.